Hello there, welcome to another video from Neurology. In this video, I want to talk about this paper, Viper GPT, Visual Inference via Python Execution for Reasoning. So this paper is published in 14 March 2023, still new. In one of the previous video, I talked about chain of thought reasoning. And here I want to talk about Viper GPT and uh, some of the advantages that Viper, Viper GPT has over chain of thought and let's see the abstract first to make our mind ready to start in going to the details so they they said answering visual queries is a complex task that requires both visual processing and reasoning and to end models uh, the dominant approach for this task do not explicitly differentiate between the two so between the uh, processing and reasoning that's why uh, they limit interpretability and generalization. Learning modular program present a promising alternative, but has proven challenging due to the difficulty of learning both the programs and modules simultaneously. We introduced Viper GPT, a framework that leverage code generation models to compose vision and language models into subroutine to produce a result for any query. Viper GPT utilizes a provided API to access the available modules and composes them by generating Python code that is later executed. This simple approach requires no further training and achieve a state-of-the-art result across various complex visual tasks. So they mention here that in computer vision, we have many different algorithms like object detection, depth estimation, segmentation, and many different tasks. But if you want to use them in combination and like combining these together to achieve the proposed goal, sometimes it's challenging. Uh, first of all, it said, not only does this fail to make use of advances in fundamental vision tasks at different steps, it does not make use of the fact that computers can perform mathematical operations uh, without machine learning. So for example, in Chain of Thought, if you ask about some question and that it needs some level of reasoning, like chain of thought and during this chain of thought there are some uh, mathematical operation uh, sometimes it is not working very well very well uh, it's getting better recently but it's still uh, doing some mathematical operation like division product stuff like that sometimes um, they may have some uh, issue with that but computers can do them perfectly so they are Proposing here that why, when we want to do the chain of thought, instead of producing the language again, we produce the quotes, we produce the at least pseudo code or algorithm. Here they are producing quotes. And how they do that is let's see some of the example. So they showed here that uh, how many muffins can each kid have for it to be fair? So the generated code based on the Viper GPT is something like this. So they have some functions like image patch. They just apply that as a docker string to the, uh, as a prompt. Uh, so as a docker string into the prompt. And they have some modules here. And each of these modules may, be, uh, may call some of the end-to-end -end approach or some of the uh, fundamental approach. Uh, I will explain what approaches they have picked here. But image patch, for example, here is trying to patching the images. And then there are there is a function called find in their documentation in Docker string. And we can ask uh, a query, a language query, a string query, and uh, we will get the muffin patches. So this is the first step, first of all, to answer this question, how many muffin can each kid have, is to first understand how many muffin exist. So we will get how many we have. Then we need to know how many kids we have. So we have the same thing, image page, and we say find kid, and we will get kids. And you, you can see here we have kids, and then we just want to do some um, mathematical operation. So if you want to do this by just language model, and for example, I assured you by chain of the thought, maybe we can do some of this, uh, but also chain of the thought has the problem sometimes because it's just language in some of these operations and also we cannot leverage this to some of the 
good model we have in the computer vision. So suppose we have this for any algorithm you have, you have some fundamentals model for object detection, for image grounding, for uh, segmentation. And you know that many of the end-to-end -end complex tasks can be resolved just by finding the way that you should put this algorithm, this fundamentals model. Uh, so by doing that, um, and training a language model on top of that to learn what is the duck string and what is the API. Maybe it can be a Swagger API that you want to call those functions. So the language model can uh, return you an algorithm or, or code that you can just execute that code and you get that end-to-end -end task done. So that's the whole idea behind this paper, Viper GPT. Let's go down to see some of the duck string they are uh, providing to the model. In the, yeah, after the paper, there are some attachment to it. So you can see, for example, here, image patch is a class and there are duck string uh, showing first of all, what are the parameters uh, for this class and um, what are the functionality, what, what are the methods it has and how we can call this with what parameters. And I think for some of them, there are some examples. But they mentioned here that they didn't apply the code uh, to the prompting. So they didn't include the codes into the prompting. The reason was that maybe the code uh, would be get, uh, maybe the code get better, the algorithm can get better, but they don't want to like, again, change the prompt based on that. So uh, the language model can just get the abstraction of what's going on and what capability functions has. And based on that, it just want to produce the algorithm to reach the final result. So uh, they, they do not apply like these functionality to the uh, model. And they mentioned that here, let me go up. The input, they use codex. And they mentioned the input to the codex does not contain the full implementation of the API. Instead, it's given the spef a specification for the API, including the function, signature, and duck string. Abstracting away the implementation detail is beneficial for two reasons. First, language model, uh, large language model context windows are limited in size, so we cannot like have a code repository and have, a, have it as a prompt. Then uh, making it infeasible to include the entire implementation. In addition, the abstraction may code generation independent of the change made to the module implementation. So as I said, maybe we have improved those modules and we want to use them uh, without changing the or tuning the prompt. So what models they have used, it's very interesting also. So they used this model. They mentioned about uh, pre-trained models here. The perception and external knowledge module used by Viper GPT are GLIP for object detection. XVLM for text image similarity as it surpasses clip at attribute detection and Midas for depth estimation and GPT-3 for external knowledge and BLIP2 for simple visual queries. So these are, I can say, these are fundamental models for multimodal and computer vision. So uh, GLIP for object detection surpasses many, many algorithms, even the dynamic head segmentation. Uh, it can be used for image grounding. And it's also mentioned here uh, about XVLM. XVLM, there are some newest algorithm uh, over XVLM. As it mentioned here, it can surpass the clip. And some of the data set like reference, COCO, stuff like that, can be trained using this XVLM or another one is called, I think, Uni, Unitex, if I'm not wrong. So yeah, so X2VLM is uh, still there. And there are some other methods like mplug there, um, which is a, a still a little better than uh, the X2VLM. So X2VLM is also out there. So feel free to look at them. And also I, I like to have some video about them. I'm, not familiar in this domain very well, so I need to work on that. I think you now understand how Viper GPT works and how it is cool. So they mentioned here, uh, the, their, their method, first of all, is interpretable because uh, the output 
is an algorithm and each part of the algorithm can be interpreted. They said, our simple approach enjoys many benefits. This is interpretable, as all the steps are explicit as code function calls with intermediate values that can be inspected. It is logical, as it explicitly used built-in Python logical and mathematical operator, and it's flexible. It's flexible because it can easily incorporate any vision or language model, only requiring the specification of the associated module to be added to the API. And it is compositional. Uh, the composing task into a smaller subtask perform a step by step. So this is one of the other cool parts. So some of the compositional tasks, uh, they cannot be solved by chain of thought reasoning, if you think about it. Uh, compositional means, for example, we have a mathematical operation in the middle. We have like a vision model in the middle. And we need the combination of all to get to the final result. So that's the compositional. And it is adaptable to advances in the field as improvement in any of the use, used modules will result in direct improvement in our approach performance. So if we improve, for example, GLIP uh, to GLIP v2 or GLIP to GLIP v2, uh, so we, we have improved the model, so we have improved the end-to-end -end performance of this also. And it's also training free because we are using the prompting. And finally, it is general as it's unify all tasks into one system. So this is really cool. And so there is a Python executor. So we have a like a function. So one of the thing is that uh, this, this function, first of all, should work. Because if you work with like chat GPT or other, sometimes the, the code that they are provided is buggy. So first of all, I think one of the issue they have is to make sure that everything this is generated by is uh, executable. And I think that's why they use codecs because it's mostly uh, trained on code data. One of the advantage of using the Viper GPT, which is very, really cool, is that we can have some contextual uh, information. For example, if you ask, return the car that is on the correct lane. So if it is in England, uh, if it is in US, so the answer can be different. So it said here, the context is picture was taken in the US. So in that case, uh, let's see, first of all, we, could find, we should find car. And uh, for car in cars, for each of them, we wanna say if car horizontal center is bigger than the image horizontal center. So ju we just wanna see horizontal center of this is here. Uh, you wanna see, is it, left or right and this is like sim simplifying the question because i think we need also to detect these lines but it just suppose that the image we get is somehow from the full road so uh, based on that also I, I think it's just simplifying because it's need to understand this is the front of the car this is back of the car so these need to be determined first then going to this uh, query. But the point is not that. The point is we can have some contextual information there if we want to have a more exact answer to the questions. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have fun.